Hi everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar channel. And in today's video, I will share my tips for successful distance learning during the coronavirus outbreak. So these are truly unprecedented times. People are sheltering in place, everyone who can is working from home, and college students who normally learn on campus are home on lockdown, trying to figure out how to best learn online. So I've been in grad school in a distance learning program for the past couple of years, and I thought I'd share some of my tips on how to make it go as smoothly as possible. So first, let's just talk about the differences between online and classroom learning. So in my experience with online learning, you basically teach yourself by doing the assigned readings or watching the assigned videos or both, and then you use that newly gained knowledge to answer discussion questions either directly to your professor or in an interactive forum like a text-only Blackboard discussion board, a flip grip grid video posting, or a voice thread which can be text, video, or voice only. So those are just the tools that my school uses. They may be different from yours, but the concepts are all the same. After all, there's only so many ways that you can respond to something. So there's usually a requirement to respond back to your classmates to generate some interaction with your peers on the concepts that you just learned. So this whole thing is referred to as asynchronous learning. So that means that you work at your own pace and you don't have to be online at the same time that everyone else is. You will have deadlines, but within those guidelines, everyone posts at times that are convenient for them. Your professors may want you to engage in synchronous learning. Uh, where they would set up something like a Zoom video meeting and they would have everyone join in at the same time. But I'm guessing that that is going to be tough to require that everyone be available all at the same time. And it's going to probably take some time to work out the kinks in the process as all of these professors get used to the constraints of distance teaching. So what does all this mean for you? So first of all, you'll need to get organized. The thing about distance learning is that you have way fewer touch points with your professors and other students to give you reminders of what you should be doing at any given time. As a result, you will have to be more self-driven and more aware of what is due and when. So you need to get organized. Gather all of your syllabuses or syllabi or whatever and go over them. Remember that your professors are likely changing everything, so make sure that you are looking at the latest plan for all of your classes. What do you have coming up? What readings do you have? When are things due? If you are doing asynchronous learning with weekly posts and responses, you'll need to figure out the deadlines for each of your classes, which this can be really confusing since you may have multiple deadlines per week per class. So a deadline for your original post, and you'll need to have done all of your reading and preparation by then, plus a deadline to respond back to your classmates and interact with others online. So it may take a couple of weeks to get used to the rhythm of each of these classes, by which time you may have missed some deadlines. So print out a weekly calendar, so I've linked to a blank one in the description of this video below, and write in when things are due for each class on a weekly basis. Post that weekly schedule somewhere obvious until you get to the point where you don't need to refer to it anymore. So you may also need to make sure that you know when your other assignments are due. So online classes usually have both weekly work and bigger assignments like exams, projects, or papers. Go through the syllabus or the plan for each of your classes and then write down the due dates for your bigger assignments on a calendar that you refer to regularly. You won't have frequent in-person classes to serve as a reminder for these looming assignments, so you need to make sure that you know them so they don't sneak up on you. All of this initial organizing is kind of a big picture structural planning. I would also suggest that you establish a weekly planning day. So that means on the same day every week before you do anything else, you spend about an hour determining your plan for the week. So I do this on Mondays, but if you do a lot of your work on the weekends, maybe Friday or Saturday is the best planning day for you. So what do you do on planning day? So you're gonna go through every class, determine what you need to do for the week, when your deadlines are, and you schedule when you want to complete that work. You can use whatever task management system that you already use. I use Todoist, and I do have a video on using that for college or university or for high school, but use whatever works for you. So this is also a good time to look ahead to some of your bigger assignments and start to break down how you're going to accomplish them. So planning for bigger assignments is outside of the scope of this video, but I do have a video on that process if you are interested. Basically, planning day requires you to look at all of your classes in kind of a holistic way and assign days to each of the things that you need to do for that week. Having a planning day is crucial to not letting things slip through the cracks. 
To make date assignment easier, I would recommend blocking your time. So you are used to going to class a couple of times a week, right? And that time is totally dedicated to that specific class, right? Well, I would continue to block time for each class just like that. So I tend to front load the reading for each of my classes. So my first block is larger than my second or third blocks, but I have a weekly schedule that spells out exactly when I'll be doing work for each of my classes. I would then add these blocks to your calendar and try not to schedule anything else on top of them. This makes it so much easier on planning day when you are assigning dates for your work. So for example, if I'm looking at the weekly work for my research class and my first block for this class is on Mondays, I will assign most of my tasks to that date. I may have to collaborate with my homework team for our weekly assignment, so I can't do everything on Monday, but I have another block scheduled for Wednesday and then again on Friday for revisions and submissions. So there are a couple of benefits to following a blocked schedule. First of all, you can concentrate on one subject without having your brain distracted by other classes. After all, you know that you have a block scheduled for that other class coming up. And second, it provides some structure. So as much as we all kind of disdain rigidity, this total freeform lack of structure may actually drive us all crazy. You'll need to create a certain amount of structure in your life just to keep sane, and this will help. And speaking of saying sane, I would recommend creating a good learning space. So this might be challenging right now. After all, if your house is anything like mine, everyone is at home trying to get stuff done. So there are only so many good study slash work areas in your house. But really give it some thought. If you're the kind of person who needs quiet to work, find a remote-ish area and set up your space there. Get creative if you need to. One of us is using a card table in our sunroom. If you work better being around others, set yourself up in a well-trafficked area, but make sure you're able to block noise with headphones or hearing protection. Gather all the study materials that you may need and make it as cozy and appealing as you can. After all, you'll be spending a lot of time in this space. And if it's not working somehow, don't be afraid to change things up. And just a note on the challenge of crowded environments. Staying focused is going to be harder than ever. I have a video on some of my tips for focusing, but don't forget to take breaks, give yourself rewards, and use music or sound blocking to help you. And my final tip, stay connected. Keep in touch with your professors and the other students in your classes. Distance learning can be very isolating, and the only way to combat that is by staying connected. So I have group texts with uh, people from each of my classes where we complain, ask questions, and commiserate. Professors are also super open to communications from students since they don't see them regularly in class. It's really the only way to maintain relationships and not feel so alone. And that is it. You can check out some of my other organizing and planning tips in my grad school playlist, but let me know what you think. Comments are always appreciated, and thanks for watching.